What's up YouTube, this is Mahan. Today I'm going to talk about the mistakes you should avoid when you are signing your contract. If you're wholesaling a property, you have it on the contract, you have your cash buyer, now they're interested in uh, signing your assignment contract. I'm assuming you all have your assignment uh, whenever you get a property on the contract so you can sign it with your cash buyer and get your assignment fee. Now today I'm going to talk about a few things that you should avoid if you want to avoid losing money or avoid uh, earning less assignment fee for every deal that you do. So now I'm going to give you guys an example. Let's just say you have a property on a contract, you find a cash buyer that want to sign your assignment fee. Uh, most of the time, based on experience, when the cash buyers, the house flippers, they, they see how much money you're making in these transactions. They don't think it's fair to them because they're doing all the work. They they might be dealing with a hard money lender. They might be doing uh, working with the contractors, uh, realtors on the back end to get these properties fixed up and flip it and sell it on the market. So when you assign your contracts, they're gonna see that hey, Mahan, you're making 10k, and for flipping a contract. Uh, and I want to negotiate that. So what happens is a lot of time when they first get your assignment contract, they come in and say, hey, uh, I want to get the property for a lower price. You should only make $5,000. Uh, this is too much. And you really don't have, you know, you really don't have any leverage here and they can actually negotiate the price down. They can come back to you and you, you end up making low, uh, lower fees and you make less money on, uh, per transaction. And it happens a lot. So, and you're in a situation where you already signed a contract with your seller, trying to sell the property as soon as possible. And I see a lot of wholesalers, they accept this um, lower fees to just move their inventory and close more deals. But what we do here, in order to avoid uh, cash buyers to negotiate our fees up front, or even right before the closing. So recently we had a transaction where we had the property on the contract at $33,000 and we were signing it at 45. Uh, investor signed the assignment fee. He didn't say anything. And right on the closing day, after they sent him the HUD for him to sign, he gave us a call and said, hey, I want to back out from this deal because you guys are making $12,000 for this property and I just did some extra inspection or my contractor walked through it and it needs a lot more work than we expected to have. So they always make some kind of excuses for you to earn lower fees. So at this point, our seller already signed a contract. We don't have any leverage. We kind of want to be like, okay, we either lose the deal or instead of making $12,000, reduce our fee to seven from 12 to 7K because this guy is gonna back out from uh, back out from the transaction and we don't have any backup buyers. We already told the seller we're closing today uh, and they can pick up their check in 48 hours. So we really don't have any options here. So now the solution to that, so you could avoid losing $5,000 or more because you know um, we all know the cash buyers they're looking for deals you're looking for deals and they try to negotiate as much as they can so they can make more money on the back end so now what we do is we sign instead of assignment contracts we sign purchase contract with investors so up front they don't see how much money or how much assignment fee you're making per transaction. So how this will look like with the deal that I just talked to you guys about, we will sign a purchase contract, we'll be the seller or signer and there's no, nothing about the assignment fee, how much money we're making in this transaction. They only know that they're buying a property for $45,000 and that's the number we agree on today and we go to the close. Now what would give you guys leverage to negotiate and kind of 
don't let any money go when they try to negotiate with you is getting a non-refundable EMD. So every transaction, if you're working with cash buyers, you need to ask for at least 5K, $5,000 uh, EMD and it should be non-refundable. So now, you sign a contract, you tell them you have other people looking at this deal, a lot of markets, the inventory is low, so investors really need to get more deals going. So you tell them, this is, this is how we do deals, and we should be really strict uh, about getting the $5,000 EMD. Why? Because when you sign a purchase contract, you didn't mention anything about your $12,000 fee, and what would happen is, there's a clause in your contract which would say we have the right to turn this purchase agreement to an assignment agreement so it gives us as uh, as the wholesaler as the assigner to turn this purchase agreement to an assignment agreement and that's the time that your cash bar is going to see that how much money you're going to make but for them, they already have $5,000 non-refundable in the deal. So if they try to negotiate with you, in this case, they would say, hey, you should make only $7,000 instead of twelve. dollars we, we, we have more leverage here. We have $5,000 non-refundable that's already in escrow account. Title company is holding it. And we tell them, no, we can't do that. And if they back out of the deal, they're going to lose that $5,000. So now you have more chances of not losing money. And if you do, if they back out from the deal, you're still making $5,000. If you end up not selling the house or if you don't have that relationship with your seller or the seller doesn't want, want to wait another two weeks for the next buyer, so you're making your $5,000 and you move forward. So a couple of things. A couple of other things I would suggest you guys always do, always ask for proof of fund. A lot of people, they tell you to cash buyers, you need to see their bank statements. If they work with private money or hard money lenders, you need to get those pre-approval letters, make sure there's no contingencies on those pre-approvals. You know, do they need appraisal? Uh, do, they, do they need appraisal? Do they need home inspection? Or is there like a certain down payment they need to have? So if if the hard money lender needs 20% down, does this investor has have 20% down for this property? Some some deals it could be up to forty thousand dollar, and a lot of them they don't have it. So you need to be really careful with that. So what I would suggest here, when you're signing a contract, So always ask for proof of fund, right? If it's cash, you need to get bank statements. So last two months of bank statements. So you make sure they have the funds in their bank account so they're not wasting your time, wasting your uh, seller's time also. And if they're using hard money loan, Make sure there is no contingencies with the loan and if there is make sure you call the lender and make sure you ask a couple other people if they work with these lenders before there's a lot of scams out there these hundred percent lenders they can't really close the deals and you want to avoid any issues in your transactions because things happen and you want to avoid them so now if the lender tells you that they need 20 percent down you want to go and ask the uh, the investor to provide your bank statement showing they have the 20% down uh, for this deal to close. If there is an appraisal uh, contingency, if there's anything like inspections that need to be done, make sure you pay attention to these so you communicate with your seller and they're fine with you going out there doing an inspection or doing an appraisal and um, you uh, kind of take care of that up front. So that's about that, so make sure you have the funding, make sure you have the EMD, 
Don't use assignment contract. Use a purchase contract with the clause uh, allowing you to flip it to the assignment contract, which you will tell your title company to turn it into an assignment. The buyer is going to see it on the HUD or the CD, how much money you're making, but you have the leverage of $5,000 so you don't lose money when you're wholesaling real estate, wholesaling houses, and it helps you to just make more money, more assignment fee. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to our channel and we'll see you guys on the next video.